In today's video, we're going to talk about what I would consider an excellent survival firearm, the Marlin 795 22 caliber rifle. Hey folks, my name is Brian and you're watching Survival On Purpose. Thanks for stopping by. So as I said, today's video is going to be about the Marlin back here, a 795 22 caliber rifle. And it's kind of a departure for this channel because I, this is the first time I've ever done a gun video of any kind, firearms, firearms video. Uh, I'm not a firearms expert by any stretch of the imagination. There are lots and lots and lots of uh, great video channels out there that deal way more in depth with firearms than I do. Um, and if you're looking for one, by, I might suggest Twang and Bang. It's a great, great channel. Uh, if anything to do with, with anything that shoots projectiles, pretty much it's going to be covered on there and he does a great job. So a little shout out to Twang and Bang. But I did decide that since this channel is kind of about survival and self-sufficiency and whatnot, on a more of a budget-minded for the average person, um, I want to talk about this. I got this rifle for my son last year for his birthday. It was his first rifle. I chose the 795 for a couple reasons. First of all, before we get started, I know there's going to be people out there that, that tell me this is, you know, this is not the best choice. I should go for a 1022. Hey, I like 1022s. I've got one. Um, this was a little less money than a 1022 probably about a hundred bucks less money and it's got a really great reputation shoots really well it's very lightweight but yet it's a full-size firearm so this is something that he can grow into and have his entire life so let's talk about this the features of this thing and i'll explain to you why i chose this one okay so this is the marlin 795 22 caliber rifle the overall length of this rifle is 37 inches with an 18 inch barrel the barrel features a 1 in 16 micro groove rifling, which is a Marlin exclusive. It also um, comes with a black synthetic Monte Carlo stock with checkering and built in swivel studs. The uh, rifle also has a automatic bolt hold open device for the last shot. So after the last shot, it automatically holds the bolt open just like that. It has, weighs about four and a half pounds and it has a 10 shot detachable magazine. It has cross bolt safety and you can also use a manual bolt hold open. It's got an adjustable open rear sight and a ramp front sight. The receiver is also grooved for scope mounts. The price of this rifle is gonna vary, you know, obviously, but you're probably looking at somewhere between $130 to $170, uh, well under $200. I got this one for about $130 uh, in probably in January of 2013. Okay, so like I said, this is a uh, some of the features I talked about. I want to point out, and one of the reasons I chose this instead of a 1022. Went to an event with my sons called it was called the Appleseed event. Uh, and it's a great organization. I'll put a link below actually because I think it's really, really cool. It's appleseedproject.org, appleseedproject.org, but I'll put that below. And what they do is this, they teach revolutionary war history specifically that, um, about the Battle of Lexington and Concord. And then they, they mix, actually they teach firearm safety and marksmanship and mix in the history with it. But either way, it's a weekend event typically. And a lot of people shoot 22s because you shoot a lot of rounds that weekend and 22 ammunition is cheaper and at that time about three years ago it was readily available so who knows how it's going to be when you see this video my son had a brand new 1022 and everything i read on the on the site about that said you need to change the sights out but everybody had said that these sights on the marlin they liked a lot better and, and the reason i liked them better is if you can see this rear sight here okay it's nothing fancy at all it's the, actually the same sight that, that is on um a Marlin 3030 I've got from the late 50s so they haven't changed this design a whole lot but it's a dovetail so you can adjust it for for windage that way you adjust it for elevation by messing that little ramp right there lifting that up and sliding this back and forth and it catches on those notches if you can see that but I like the fact that the notch here is very very small and so you got a little bead on the front and the little bead on the front just fits in here there's this it's just a very tight close fitting sight as opposed to the one that comes stock on the Ruger in my opinion. Uh, the other thing, one of the advantages I think this has maybe over the Ruger, and again I'm not hating Rugers, I'm just telling you, you know, this just like it is. It's got a built-in sling swivel, so one here, one here, they're just molded into the stock. 
Uh, Ruger, you have to actually drill it and put some in. It doesn't come with them. And it's typically got a wooden stock, so it's a little nicer. Uh, the other thing that Ruger doesn't do is hold open on the last shot, which was a kind of a detraction uh, when you're trying to do some time shooting because you, you got to really know if you're only shooting a few shots, you have a hat piece of a magazine in here it's just a safety factor and everything else so when this thing runs empty it uh let me just close it for you when it runs empty it locks back open so you know it's empty you do a magazine change you just change the magazine you put a new one in and push release and you're ready to fire this is a little feature that Ruger doesn't have bottom line <laughs> and you can also just manually hold it open just by the magazine's out you want to manually hold it open you push that little lever there up and it locks back if you want to close the bolt you just take that little lever there push it down bolt closes so when you're loading around in I've got an empty magazine here for safety you can put your magazine in and if you just pull it back like that if it's got a round in it, it's gonna close but if you, if you got an open chamber because you just shot your last round you pop the magazine in you're ready to fire it's got a cross bolt safety uh, comes with a 10 round detachable magazine which is one of the reasons I chose this rifle instead of the uh, tubular magazine that Marlin's been making forever, and, that's, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great tried and true design. But for the apple seed event, you have to do the magazine change. And that's why I got this one. And again, it's, you know, it's nothing fancy. This is a sub $200 rifle, but it's very accurate. It's a 22. 22s are pretty inherently kind of accurate. And for something that you're going to use for, for maybe shooting small game, hunting small game, squirrels, rabbits, um, you know, even slightly larger game to uh, just practice target practice and plinking even the fact that 22 ammunition is a lot harder to come by right now at least in its time of this video in um, May of 2014 it's still when you can find it even though the prices are we would consider them outrageous there's still a lot less than any larger caliber ammo so and if you're gonna shoot you want to keep your skills you know well honed you got to practice so it's still cheaper to practice with a 22 than about anything else Again, I'm not hating on I'm not hating on Rugers. I like Rugers. I got a 1022. I think they're great rifles. I also think this is a great rifle, and it's like I said, it's probably $100 less than the average price of a Ruger. You know, there's features the Ruger has that that this doesn't have, especially the takedown model, which is really cool. But for the for under $100, $150 around that range, it's a great rifle. Uh, the pros of this rifle, in my opinion, would be a the price. The price is very very low, very much, probably one of the lowest priced the quality 22s you can get. Marlin's an extremely old manufacturer, very reputable. It's lightweight, doesn't weigh four and a half pounds or so, so it's really easy to carry, especially if you want to pack it or whatever. It doesn't fit in a pack, but it's pretty easy to carry. If you got to carry this all day long, it's not going to matter. Now, the cons are really the only negative that I, I can know of is I had a, pr a little bit of a hard time finding extra magazines for this. Now, I was able to find some, but they were like 20 something bucks a piece and I had to get them at a gun show. I found just a guy that happened to have some and I bought a couple because I got my other son a 22 also. So that's my take on the Marlin 795. I hope this has been helpful to you. Again, this is not a gun channel. I'm not trying to pretend or change the direction of this channel anyway, but I do think this fits in for the survival really on a shoestring. 150 bucks is not pennies, I understand, but if it's in the firearms world, that is an exceptionally low price for a quality rifle. So, once again, I hope this has been helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to Survival on Purpose. Uh, give, thanks for giving it the thumbs up if you like it. And let, let Google know you like it and tell all your friends if you think they will. I really appreciate all your help. You can check out my Amazon store below. That really supports the channel. Thanks for everything. My name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. See you next time.